Hey everyone, Sir Turbo here again. And today we're gonna bring some yellow gameplay. So the next three videos are gonna be Katakuri. Now the Katakuri decks haven't been doing too well on OPO3. We do get to add two new cards though from the starter deck nine. We get to play some Gamatos here, and we also get to play two Nagikabura arrows, which can be it can be good in certain situations. So Today's matchup is going to be a best of three against a white beard player. So hope you enjoy the three games. I actually think this matchup is very difficult for the yellow player. So let's see how we can navigate this counter matchup against us. So hope you enjoy the games. And if you do, make sure to like the video below and subscribe to us. We post one of these videos every single day. Enjoy. In this matchup, we're going against white beard. And this is one of, if not our worst matchup. Um, I will keep this hand. We have the Perona. Like, this is actually <laughs> our worst matchup. Um, let's go ahead and grab this Perospero for now. Just because the opponent can just take all this life, right? And it makes our 7 cost and our 10 cost lane lane really just be useless against them. So, it kind of makes things a little bit awkward here, right? Like, if we just attack here, what's the point, right? If we attack here, opponent can just take the life. And then it makes our 7 cost lane lane a lot worse. So, I'm actually debating just playing this Opera down and just not attacking. I think this is actually correct. We just play Opera, let them take like like the way that I, I played the White Beer matchup a lot. I played White Beer at the Gen Con Regionals and, and Treasure Cup. And uh the way that I played this matchup as the White Beer player is you just kind of take you just take as much life as the as the yellow player gives you. That way your their seven cost lane lane and their ten cost lane lanes are kind of useless. So again, it makes it awkward here because I feel like a shooting attack into them. I might just go ahead and play this Yamato out. I will attack right now. Just to see the top of my life. Just so that we can kind of set up some triggers. So if they want to take this one, that's okay. Okay, they're actually going to give me the counter. And then we're going to go ahead and just drop this Yamato. And just set up for like this bunch of units that we can get value from next turn. Right? We want to get value from our Linlins being coming down into the field. Because the opponent's going to naturally take all this damage. And I don't want him to remove my units by me attacking with the Opera when I don't really necessarily need to. So here I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give you the counters. I'm gonna give you the counters. I'll take this one. And then what? You're gonna play a seven cost. If I can kill this, if I can kill like the speed yields, etc., I think that's better for us. Um than trying to take their life, right? Because the opponent is going to just take their last life, potentially, right? Okay, so do we eat up all the counters this time? Probably, right? If they want to use all these counters this turn, I think I'm also okay with that. If they want to give me the life, that's fine. If they take the life, then that means that next turn, they're going to go to zero life. So they're going to zero life next turn. If they want to save this, they're using another counter. We don't have triggers on the bottom two cards of our life, so they have to use another counter here to save the speed geo. I don't think this is worth it for them. I guess it's worth it. Okay, they use a guard point, so it's worth it for them to try to kill my units, but they're going to be a zero life next turn, and we have a big tank cost in lane. So, like, you, you're able to kill my units. Sure, right? You're able to kill my units. Props to you. But how are you blocking this big tank cost in lane next turn? I mean, this this big attack, right? Like, how are you blocking this big attack next turn? I, just, I can just take all the damage. If I hit a trigger of life here, you're going to be in a bad situation. Can we beat them next turn? I think so. Like, I think we just win next turn. So they could have Radical Beam plus Guard Point. That could take them to 13. We can get up to 18. So then the opponent will have to have 15, 17. I guess they could have enough. They could have enough to actually make it there. Is it ever better for me to actually have the Karakuri as an additional card that the opponent has to watch out for? Like, this additional attack just eats up another 2k counter. And this going to 17 is not really a lot different than going to 18, right? Um, I think we just go for it. I think we just go for it. And if they have it, they have it. This has to be a 2k counter. Okay. So that's double 1k counter. That looks good to me. 
And then we go like this for 17. Radical beam. Okay, that's not a radical beam, so it doesn't matter, right? So again, this is what I wanted to do in this matchup. Like, this matchup is good for them if I just attack them. If I'm able to just set up my board and set it up in such a way that the opponent's going to have a hard time dealing with my board, is good for us. They get to go first this time, so this actually doesn't look too great for us. Um, this brulee just dies to, to the opponent's uh, Marcos. So I think I'm just going to pick the Sanji instead. And maybe it's just going to be Big Mom, right? Maybe we just play the 10 cost Big Mom to take their last life if they're still there by the time they get there. They get their Josu. Again, not really worth playing any of this stuff out. I guess we could play the Sanji out. Um, sure, you know what? I'll I, I, I just take the life. I'll take the life because I have nothing better to do, right? I'll take the life because I have nothing better to do. Let's leave it on the top. That way we can have another unit on the field. That's that's exactly what we're looking for. These tank cost big ones are not going to come into play. Because it's going to be really easy for the opponent to just uh, be a zero life by the time they come down, right? So, same thing here. We can go ahead and just play this opera, I guess. So, I guess let's, again, just get some value here. Opponent just needs to keep taking their life. And it's okay for them. But I guess they have to be careful that if they take too much life, they're also just going to just die too easily. So we'll go like this. Mm, let's, two K let's, let's block that. Let's block that. I, I also don't want to take too much damage if I don't need to. Right? I don't want to take too much damage if I don't need to. So here... I want to set up this these two cards, right? The Peros Pero and the uh, maybe we don't need to set up the Peros Pero. What if we just go like the double attack doesn't matter. If we can hit one life, then opponent will be a zero. I probably want to have access to the Peros Pero instead of the Cracker. So that's three done that I need to have. The Nakabura Arrow could potentially keep me alive. So we can go go to eight here. I don't want to attack with this opera though, right? So, eight. What if we just go to 10? What if we just go to 10 here? And leave it at the top? This is going to force a guard point plus a 2k. Okay, so this is, this is exactly what we're looking for. So then we just pass. And now the opponent is going to be a zero life next turn. And we have a lot of attackers. So now that they are zero life... The 10 cost big mom kind of is a waste, like I said, but that's fine. Use trigger effect, trash the 10 cost big mom. All right. We just have to present a lot of damage next turn and try to win the game there. Opponent has to keep a lot of events counter, so they get the 2k counter with the Josu. So they have the 2k counter with the Josu, they have the crossfire. So 2k counter, crossfire, which I actually don't even remember what crossfire does. Uh do I wanna do I wanna block this, right? Do I wanna block that? Crossfire is a counter. Gives one of my opponent what gives something minus 4k. So it's pretty much like a radical beam for 2k. Let's block that. Let's block that. And they get the marker blocker. So they have the marker blocker and they only have that one they only have that one 2k counter right but they have a lot of cards so they have a lot of cards they have the one 2k counter we have a lot of done um six let's start with eight let's start with eight here it's forcing two cards out of them or a guard point. Okay, so now we know that the opponent is probably just gonna have another guard point then, right? Uh, I guess at this point, we should just eat up their one case. The opponent has three attacks, potentially four attacks next turn. Uh, we don't really have a way to, to save ourselves. We don't have any blockers. I need to try to just go for the lethal, right? I don't think I can go for their units. The opponent has the blocker. We, cap we have six down to play with. We can get to eight on the Katakuri. Six, six, six. That leaves me with one done open. So the Karakuri should go to nine. 
and we just go sits everywhere else. Just, I guess at this point, we're just going to eat up all these 1k counters for now. And just hope that we can survive the next turn, which is very unlikely. Yeah, we're just going to eat up all the 1k counters for now. That's a, that's a, that's a hit. That's a hit if I ever seen one. Radical Beam. Okay, so they still have their blocker. They have their blocker, and they still have that other event counter that does minus four. So, that could be a problem. If we take this hit... One, two, three. No, I think I think we I think we counter out of it and just go like this. Remember we have this brulee, right? The only thing that scares me about this brulee is that the opponent could have a removal for her. They will have to attack with their Marco to be able to pretend to present lethal. They can kill us by going ESO and, and the white beer, right? Yeah, so they just put everything in the ESO and they just win the game there. Or if they have a rush Luffy, they also get there. Yeah. So unfortunately for me, the opponent just ended up having that extra stuff. So let's see if we can get the third rematch and just make it a best of three. All right. So we get the rematch. We make it a best of three. But we get to go second this time, which is what we're looking for. We got a mulligan the soul hand. Because again, we want to just set up that board that we've been talking about to just have like a big hit. Um... And kind of go that way. Opponent gets the ESO. Yeah, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and pick the seven cost big mom. That's that's the cap. That's the type of cards that I want to have in my hand, right? Uh, and just set up like a big board that the opponent is gonna have a hard time dealing with. We can go opera. Yeah, we'll take it. Oh, look at that. Sure, I get the free trigger. Yeah, let's go Opera here. Just pass the turn. We'll get the free trigger. This is a this is an easy marker for the opponent, like a super easy marker for the opponent. Next turn we have Sid, so we can go ahead and play Perospero. Oh, they didn't get the marker. They got a Speed Hill. So if you're gonna go like this, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to give you the two K. Yeah. So here we'll go ahead and play this Perospero, right? We we have Sid, so we can't really do anything else. Um, so Peril's Peril, that leaves me with two done open. That leaves me with two done open. So maybe we just actually go ahead and just spend all three here. Let's place it in the top. All right. And then we play Peril's Peril. We pass the turn. Opponent is going to lose one life here, and then we're going to give them the choice of either losing the last life or giving us an extra life. So it makes the Lin Lin better. Uh, the reason I kept the 10 cost Lin Lin on the top is because I don't want to put her in the bottom and then not have any counter value. At least by having her in our hand, we can potentially discard her for something else later. I need to be careful. I mean, opponent showed us that they don't have Marco. I feel like they would have just done the Marco last time if they had it. So unless they draw it here, we should be in a decent spot. We probably do want to block with this brulette though sooner rather than later. And if we have enough life, like even if the opponent doesn't take this life, oh, okay, okay. We have, like, we have to take that last life out of them because they're going to have that nine cost new gate, right? They're going to have that nine cost new gate that will allow them to just survive. Yeah, let's give you the block here. I guess if they do, we have the ten, the ten cost the ten cost big one, right? So it doesn't even matter. So let's go here. Have you choose? They might actually choose to give me the life because they want to play the nine cost new gate next turn, right? The problem with playing that nine cost new gate next turn is that I can just clear up. Like I could force you to spend more value here to actually get that nine cost on the field. 
right? Like I, I'm gonna, I can force him to spend some of their counter cards here, which I think is correct. Let's force him to use the one K counter. We know we have a Linling on the bottom after, right? Like before this one. Let's leave it on the top. I want to get my 2k counter. This is going to force a, a guard point. And if we're forcing the guard point, I think I'm chilling with this. I don't care. Because the opponent is going to play new gate here, right? Opponent is going to always play their new gate here. Like this is so obvious. And then we just go 10 cost big mom. Right? We go 10 cost big mom. Opponent loses that last life. Uh, here we have two options, right? We can try to attack their life with the tank with the A cost, and that's gonna eat up another counter. So that's gonna eat up another counter. This this thing is gonna die anyways. So we might as well just attack here. Maybe we don't. I'm actually not gonna attack with them. Because I don't want him to lose to the new gate. That way we have two big attackers next to that the opponent has to watch out for. So the tank cost big mom was great there because it gives me an extra life. There's no way that I lose this turn. Um, opponent has all these cards and they could save as much turn as they want. But these units are going to be so crazy. Like this is going to go up to 4 to 5 right now. And we can go ahead and just draw the Thunderbolt, right? The Thunderbolt, that way we get rid of any any blockers. Like if the opponent's playing Fossa or whatever. If the opponent's playing Fossa, we can get rid of any blockers. We have all the 10 cost big mobs, right? The opponent has two done. There's no way that they can stop this attack, right? Now we go here first. Sure, place in the bottom, doesn't matter. This is eating up a 2k counter. And then we go everything on the big mom. There shouldn't be a way to stop this. Even if they do, they have to have another counter. For okay, well, do we lose next turn? I don't think so, right? Opponent has to spend another 2k here and another card. And they don't have it. All right. It would have been really crazy for them to have exactly how much they needed to survive there. Uh, the reason that I went for the 7k here first is because we know that we get an extra 1k from the Katakuri. So it's worth it to just eat up that extra 2k counter that we saw them eat up. Then we put the rest on the big 10, 12 cost big mom and force the opponent to have to use all their all their events, which then means that the 8 cost Lin Lin, the 8k Lin Lin is only really losing to having exactly a 2k and a 1k right uh but the opponent easily could potentially have another event in their hand right they, do, they just didn't have enough done for all their events uh they got the radical beam which actually would have been very scary yeah this was a lot of 2ks and a 1k right <laughs> wow yeah that, that that was a lot of counters that the opponent has but this is a nice best of three this i, I still think that this is a bad matchup for us. i still think this is a very bad matchup for us I just kind of know how to play it a little bit better from being on the other side. Like being on the white beer side, I know exactly what I want to see my opponent do. And he's just attacking me and, and I just take all that life and I make their seven cost big mom useless. Because once you play the seven cost big mom, if I have zero life, I just choose to take my own life, which means that nothing happens, right? So if, I know that on the white beer player, if you can get to zero life by turn seven, you kind of have a better time than if the opponent is like constantly attacking you. So that's why I kind of made it such a way that when I play the Lin Lin, the opponent has to actually choose to give me a life because I don't want to lose the last life. I think they kind of got baited by this new gate because he kind of, yeah, like, you know, he gave you that extra life, but then he made my 10 cost big mom actually be worth playing, right? There's some consideration that I still play her anyways because I'm still getting a life even if the opponent has zero life. Um, so even if the opponent has zero life, I still have played this big 10 cost big mom. The consideration would have been whether I could have actually found lethal if the opponent has zero life and they didn't have the new gate on the field, right? So uh, definitely a tricky matchup to navigate. But if you can kind of do what I did in these two games that I won, where I just kind of build my board with this Charlotte Opera and my other units so that I can wait for them to have zero damage and then you have zero life and then just push all this damage. 
that's kind of what you're going to look for. Um, we did kind of get an aqua hander with the double linling afterwards, so I'm kind of glad that it didn't get to stand the period, otherwise that would be really annoying. But yeah, so anyways, hope you enjoyed those three games of uh, <laughs> Katakuri versus White Bear. If you did, make sure to like it below and subscribe to us. We post One Piece videos every single day, and we'll continue with more Katakuri gameplay tomorrow. So enjoy your day.